today we are smoking us up a 16 pound brisket. Oh, and there is a lot of brisket here. <sighs> Bigfoot cooking. Mm. Now this is a USDA choice cut. If you wanna spend the money and get a little bit better cut, you can go with the prime. It gets you a little bit of marbling, a little bit more marbling inside the center of it. But honestly, we're gonna be putting this on a pellet smoker. We're gonna be cooking this thing for 18 to 24 hours. You, unless you are a brisket connoisseur, you probably won't notice the difference when you're done with this between the choice and the prime, but I could be wrong. You could be that guy, sorry. But for the rest of us who uh, we're, we're kind of a player on a budget, well, let's, let's start out with the choice. Now for seasoning this brisket today, we're actually gonna keep this one pretty simple. We're not gonna go out there with all these extravagant, crazy flavors because, well, not everybody's got them in their pantry. I mean, half the stuff I've seen people put on briskets, I can't even pronounce. So this one, simple. We're gonna start with mustard. You could even use like an olive oil or just whatever. Whatever is kind of wet, sticky, and gooey that will help the spices stick to the beef, that's what you're after. So for this one, we're gonna do a mustard rub, and then we're gonna put a good thick coating of pepper on it. Just a good coarse ground pepper. You really don't wanna use the table salt with this because it's so fine, you actually could put a little too much on it and kinda, I mean, I guess if you really like pepper, hey, go for it. But again, coarse ground pepper, coarse ground salt. We're gonna rub that in. We're also gonna add a little bit of little onion powder, little garlic powder. And then what has become my recent addiction is this right here. This is Lane's Signature Seasoning. That's right, lanesbarbecue.com. I actually went to their warehouse in Bethlehem, Georgia. And I tell you what, you walk in the door and oh, the smells that you get just from being in the building. I mean, you walk out hungrier than you went in and all they have is spices. But those guys, they got something going on. They know what they're doing, but we're gonna put a good thick coating of this on the top of it. So let me go ahead and get it out of the plastic because believe me, smoking one in a plastic bag, yeah, you're doing something there. But we're gonna get this off and then we're gonna trim up some of the hard fat on it. Because in this case, actually this is, this is one of the best cuts I've seen as far as being brisket ready. There's only a little bit of trimming to do. So let me get it out of the bag and we will plop it down here and I'll show you what I gotta cut off. Boom brisket out of the bag. And this is this beautiful cut of meat we got to work with. Now to cut this thing up, I'm using my, this, I tell you what, I got this as a gift. This is a Cutlux 10 inch scimitar. It is for cutting up the beef. And I have been freaking amazed with this thing. This is a BA knife, all right? So if you're looking to up your game, they, they, they got the right stuff. Matter of fact, I even got this guy, which will be slicing up the brisket later on. We're not ready for it yet. We're gonna be breaking that guy out soon. So now, let me go ahead and get to the cutting on this fast style. Buckle up. All right, so now that we got this trimmed down, basically what we've done, I've gone through, and as you're touching this, anywhere where the fat is really thick, it, it's a lot harder to it. It doesn't give when you touch it, it's, it's pretty solid. So what I've done, I've trimmed it down until everything kind of moves when I mash on it. And for me, that's about right. Now, like I say, I know of others who don't even trim it. You just throw the whole thing on there, and when you're done, you cut that off. Well. That's great, but you're gonna be applying all these seasonings to it. Wouldn't you like to taste the flavor that we're about to impart upon this behemoth? So now that this guy is all trimmed down, let's flavor it up a little bit. All right, so to begin this, well, we'll start out with, like I said, the mustard part of it. That way we get the mustard all over this thing. So here's to the smears. And I'm sure you guys have heard it before. Those of you who hate mustard, well, You'll never taste it. It somehow the mustard genie comes back and he steals all his flavor back from this mustard because you never taste it in the final product. Well, unless you're one of those extreme snobby people, you taste it, but I think it's more of a mental taste than a real taste because this is such a massive piece of meat. It absorbs it, it turns it into deliciousness and you never know it's there. 
All right, everybody's happy with our mustard. Now we're gonna take our coarse ground pepper. Now make sure you do this from up high so that way it has a chance to sprinkle out some because if you do it down low, it makes little mountains and clumps and well, it just doesn't taste the same. You don't get that flavor on everything, you get it in one bite. But again, nice coating of pepper here. All right, we got our pepper down. Now the same with the salt. And like I say, this is where you want a good, like a sea salt or just something with larger granules. Now, don't use the stuff that you put in your driveway to melt snow with. That's not edible salt, all right? That's a whole different thing. But we're gonna take our salt and get us a good little bit of granules going on through here. A Little bit of garlic powder. And now for the lanes. Oh yeah, the good stuff, the signature rub. Now they also have, they have a bunch of rubs there. So I mean, if this isn't your jam, try something else. There is nothing wrong with experimenting in the kitchen. Well, I say that, but if you're the guy that decides, hey, I'm gonna fry chicken in motor oil, you may need some clinical evaluation. All right, now I'm gonna come through, press this in nicely. Notice I've got one hand clean, one hand dirty. This way you don't get the bottles contaminated with the things that are on the meat. I mean, nobody wants to get sick from your cooking, right? So we got this nice. Let's go ahead and flip it over. And guess what? We're gonna do the same thing. Now, yes, everybody's got their favorite flavor. Everybody's got their favorite technique. And you know what? The first time you do this, all you're doing is copying what you saw somebody else do. But you know what? The next time you do this, try something a little different. Branch out, go, hey, wonder what happens if I do this? Because again, this is such a large piece of meat that it can actually work with a few mistakes on the front side and still taste really good on the back, all right? Now, of course, as you're doing this, don't forget you got these side pieces that, well, they're just naked without flavor, right? All right, now look, when you guys are done with this, the seasoning is not just gonna be on the meat, all right? You are gonna have seasoning on the table, you're gonna have seasoning on the floor. Heck, if you do it wrong, you're gonna have seasoning in your hair, all right? This stuff goes everywhere, but you want this to be nice and coated. Now, for this, I don't know if you noticed the uh, clock on the outside wall, meaning, hey, it's nighttime. I'm starting this at about 9.30 at night. So I'm gonna put this in the smoker. I ain't gonna set up a camera outside because it's dark and everything. We're gonna put this in the smoker. I'm gonna set it for 225 and I'm gonna let it go all night, all right? At 225, I don't have to babysit this. I don't have to spritz it. I don't have to come out there and pay it any attention. This right here, after sitting here, just like it is for 30 minutes and letting the rub and the salts and everything kind of come into it. After we sit for about 30 minutes, like I say, smoker, eight, 10 hours, whatever. We're gonna check on this in the morning and see how we're doing. So again, step one, 225, step two, get a good night's rest. See you in the morning. All right, welcome to morning on Bigfoot Acres where yes, it's raining again. I swear, I think the smoker is one of those, like it's it's sending smoke signals up to the sky. It does a rain dance. I don't know, every time I fire it up, it's pouring rain the next day. So either way, we have that thing. The, the brisket has been sitting in that guy all night, 225. I set it in there with the fat cap up. I know there's a big preference on whether you do fat cap up, fat cap down, but I figure if you put the fat cap on top, as it renders, it's gonna drip down and it's gonna help keep the meat moist because that's what we're after is that juicy brisket, right? Now, after sitting there all night, we're ready to wrap this guy. You've got tin foil. Everybody knows, hey, I can wrap it in tin foil or you've got butcher paper. Butcher paper works great too, but this time it's a little bit of an experiment. We're using parchment paper. That's right, can it be done? Of course it can be done. You could wrap it in newspaper if you wanted to, but does it turn out right? So let's find out how this goes. I'm gonna pull off some parchment paper and get it set up so that way I can grab that brisket, lay that guy down on here, stand by. Woohoo! look at this guy right here. It is the epitome of beautiful, that's right. Brisket has a look to it, and this one, it definitely has the look. Now like you see, I got the parchment paper laid out all nice and pretty. Honestly, it's just rolling up a brisket and paper. Nothing complicated here. Let me uh, let me show you how to just do the thing. All right, we've got this kind of tightly wrapped around, at least as tight as you can get. With, with the butcher paper, 
the fat that's in here will actually kind of mend to it and will hold it more against it than just this right here. And of course, tin foil, well, you know, however you bend it, it stays. With this, you're gonna have a little bit of looseness, but you're still getting the same result. Now from here, I'm gonna take my two temperature probes. I'm gonna put one of them here in the Mohawk. That's right, that's the, the, the thickest part of it. And I'm gonna put one a little further down here. And that way we can watch our temperatures. Cause I wanna get this one about 205, 212, somewhere in there. Cause like I say, after cooking it low and slow, that's the biggest thing to tenderize this thing. There's a nice low and slow cook all night. It's gonna be ready to go. So in goes the probe and back into the smoker. Now, I also did kind of a two for one because while that thing sat in there all night, and yes, as I put the brisket in there, I turned it up to 275. So again, 225 all night. Now we're gonna do it at 275. But I also took the fat renderings and set them in there for that liquid gold. That's right, the tallow that you can get off of this. Oh, after, again, smoked tallow. So that basically, every time you need a little pan lube, you're gonna get that smoky flavor from this. So good. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this off, filter it, and then set this back in there and just keep this going as long as the rest of it's going. You know, come to think of it, I might do a couple more things. I bet right now we're gonna take and we're gonna wrap up some potatoes, just a little olive oil, salt and pepper on the jacket and set them in the smoker as well. So that way as the brisket gets done, you've got some slow cooked baked potatoes. Woo. I think I'm going to make me some fried chicken. What Benson doesn't know is how quickly things can go wrong. Who said that? Where's that voice coming from? Whoa, fire. This happened in my friend's house. Maybe that's why he lives in the woods with me now. Benson needs to get this fire out quickly. Why do you think I grabbed the fire extinguisher? What he hasn't realized is that extinguisher unfortunately doesn't work. All right, fine then, Mr. Voice in the Woods. What do you expect me to do now? All right, Benson, before this fire gets out of control, let me show you what you should have done. All right, first thing we need to do is grab this fire blanket, pull it out, and now we're gonna lay it on top of the fire and turn off the heat source, just like that. And make sure you leave it on the fire until the fire goes completely out. That's pretty cool. And I bet since we don't have powder everywhere, we could still eat the chicken. Well, I mean, there is a lot less mess to clean up, but it's up to you if you want to eat the chicken or not. Yeah, and I bet the blanket's now melted to everything. We're going to have to scrub it off, aren't we? Nope. Just a black spot on the blanket where the fire was. And the good thing is we didn't burn the whole kitchen down. Yo! That blanket is fire. Actually, Benson, it's anti-fire. Now, honestly, me and Benson had a lot of fun shooting this little thing, but in truth, the fabric here, there's no damage to it. I mean, it doesn't feel any different. I don't know why you couldn't fold it back up and use it again. You know, hopefully you didn't have to use it the first time, but you could use this for campfires. You could use it for anything that you needed to smother out as long as you can put it on top of it safely. That's the biggest thing because if you were to try to flip it out and lay it on it, you may get the flames to come back to you. So just laying it on top of it and then just leaving it, let it be until the fire is out. Now they did send this to me so that I could try the product out. They're not paying me. They're not any of that. So this is actual, you know, us having fun out here, but using the product as it was intended. And like you saw the second time I did this, I actually put a decent amount of fuel on here to see what would happen. And I, I am impressed with this stuff. There is a link, it's an affiliate link that's in the description below. And truthfully, I don't see why you can't, this, the good thing about this is like with a fire extinguisher, once you pull the trigger, you've got a mess to clean up. But with this, there's no mess. You could practice with the kids. So say you've got a younger child who might be a little afraid of what to do. You could run through this as like a monthly practice scenario. So that way the family, the kids, everybody knows what to do in case something goes wrong. And you're not going to damage the material by doing that. 
So as far as the safety rating, I give this a strong one. I'm not part of the fire department or anything like that, but for ease of operation, for the ability to teach the kids what to do, and it being a no cost situation where you don't have to go buy another fire extinguisher, I really like this guys. So as far as me supporting it, this has got my vote hands down, all right? Give it a try. It is an affiliate link. I do make a small amount, a small amount of money if you purchase it, but I highly recommend this, all right? So now that we've done with our little fun stuff, let's get back to the brisket because it is done, it is ready, and I am hungry. All right, my brisket hit about 212. I started probing into it. Oh, soft, tender, just going like butter. So what I did, I went ahead and cut it off and just left it in the smoker and just kind of let it sit there for about three hours. Now, let's uncover this bad boy and see what we got. Ooh-wee! That's what I'm talking about. Let's slice into it. Now, you know earlier how I was talking about the knives? Oh, I have been waiting to get a hold of this bad boy. Matter of fact, this brisket is here just for the sheer fact that whipping this cutlicks out and going through some brisket. So let's see how it slices. Let's see, we'll just pick right in the middle of this thing. Ooh, look at that. That is the way a knife should cut. And what's inside you ask? Ooh, that's that, that, oh, this is a beautiful thing. Look at this right here. Y'all, you know how they always do that little juice squeeze and ooh, out it comes? Baby, out it came. Oh, let me slice off a biting piece. Let's see, I'll get me a piece that's about a half inch thick. And of course, how does it look? How does it lay? Well, what is it they always do? You lay it over the knife and just watch it sag. Ho, ho, ho. And then just tear a bite off. And let me, let me bite with some joy here. Now see, that's the way brisket should be. It's got that little bit of, of the smoky flavor, which is of course, well, you made a brisket in a smoker. What do you expect? It's got that good smoky flavor to it, plus that Lane's uh, signature, ooh, tastes great on top. Now, of course, we made more than brisket, right? How's our potatoes looking? Let's see, we'll grab this guy here. Just a random one, and our little butter pat. Oh, where'd it go? Why it disappeared right down in here. Now, let's see, as far as the tenderness on that, I'm gonna make a little cut on the top. And then, well, let's just, let's destroy one for, you know, science. Whoa, look at that. Beautiful, tender. Man, this is gonna be great. Oh yeah. Wait till we get done with this. This right here, this is dinner for kings. And don't forget, we also made tallow. That's right, smoked tallow. Oh, this, this right here, when you get ready to fry your eggs, when you get ready to cook anything, that is the cooking oil of choice. So guys, until next time, don't forget this brisket, simple, easy, don't make it complicated, right? That's the biggest thing about cooking. People like to do 10,000 things. No, keep it simple. You guys saw, I wrapped it in parchment paper. I hadn't seen that before, have you? I sat there and seasoned it up. You watched me season it up. I let it go all night. I never spritzed, I never sprayed. Matter of fact, I slept like a baby because I didn't think about it. So until next time, y'all remember that Bigfoot is real and brisket is delicious. Y'all take care. I forgot to say, by the way, this knife there's a link to it right at the end. Right, or I left a link for this knife in the description below. Guys, I'm recommending it because like you see, it is going through this like nobody's business. So give them a try, check them out. I believe in them so far. They haven't steered me wrong. So yes, there's a definitely a Cut Lux family of knives that's gonna be in this household real soon. Like as soon as I put an order in for them, which ain't too long from now. Excuse us, we're recording out here. Bye-bye. <laughs>